The first city council meeting is getting started here in Cave City, and this is coming after the termination of former police chief Terrell Riley. We'll know and tell you what's going on coming up. Those in Washington, D.C. are honoring the lives of fallen officers, including three from Kentucky. And a look at how your driving habits could impact your child. From WBKO, your hometown news leader. This is 13 News at 5. The Cave City City Council is meeting for the first time since Police Chief Terrell Riley was terminated from his post. Hello, everyone. I'm Gene Burke. And I'm Lauren Hansen. 13 News reporter Madison Martin is outside City Hall with the latest on what we know so far. Right, Gene and Lauren, I'm standing out here of Cave City City Hall, and there have been a lot of people streaming in. I actually just spoke to former police chief Terrell Riley, and as he was walking in, he said this is definitely not the norm as far as how many people are showing up tonight. We've heard that there is different support coming out um, in the face of the termination of the police chief. And what we found out last week was talking about how uh, Mayor Hatcher tendered him his uh, termination notice. And in that notice, it said that Riley was terminated, quote, due to unsatisfactory performance of duties and hindrance of the performance of city functions. So people coming out tonight, there's nothing uh, so much said on the city agenda as far as talking about uh, what has happened here with that change in the police department, or if there's any kind of notice as to if it could change in the future. So that's something that we're going to be checking out here in City Hall when I head back in. But if you can stay tuned to us, I'll be live tweeting as we find out any difference that is going to be happening. But otherwise, uh, keep posted with us and we'll be reporting on the latest happening on 13 News at 6 and 10 tonight. But for now, reporting live in Cave City, I'm Madison Martin, 13 News. All right, thanks so much, Madison. And she'll be keeping us updated throughout the meeting. We'll have updates on our website and social media as they become available. This is National Police Week, and thousands of law enforcement officers will gather in Washington, D.C. to honor those who have died in the line of duty. Last year, 158 officers died, including three from Kentucky. Philip Meacham from the Hopkinsville Police Department, Deidre Mengadot from the Louisville Metro Police Department, and Scotty Hamilton from the Pikeville Police Department were all added to the fallen officer's memorial. Bowling Green police are familiar with the dangers of the job. One of their own, Officer David Whitson, was shot and killed in 2006. It's uh, very memorable to us every day that we need to be safe, we need to watch out for each other, but our main job is to protect the public. And so that's, that's really what our focus is. But we do keep in mind, you know, there are officers across the nation, unfortunately, that lose their lives doing this job. The 31st annual candlelight vigil will be held tonight at 8 on the National Mall in Washington, D.C. National Police Week runs Sunday, May 12th through Saturday, May 18th. A Cave City man is charged with wanton endangerment after shots were fired at an apartment complex. It happened Friday at Glenwood Apartments. Cave City police say Walter Palmowski fired a handgun in the air during a dispute with a neighbor, then fled the scene. He was arrested and taken to the Barron County Jail and has since been released. A teenager was in critical condition after a fatal wreck in Logan County. The Sheriff's Department says Mark McLean of Auburn ran off Cave Springs Road and hit a tree on Sunday. He died at the scene. 19-year-old Ethan Hunter was life flighted to Nashville and at last word was in critical condition. Well, much like our Mother's Day Sunday, this day has been filled with clouds and temperatures running about 15 degrees below seasonal averages as a result. There's that cloud cover showing up nicely on the visible satellite imagery with Doppler Max HD, not displaying any rain in the immediate area, and we don't expect that this evening. We are seeing some pockets of clearing off to the northwest up around Evansville and over into parts of Missouri and Arkansas, and eventually that clearing will arrive in Bowling Green, but not until later this evening, probably after sunset in most cases. 60 the temperature here, low 60s for Evansville, only 50s for Lexington, just 55 over in Somerset, and you might want to consider grabbing a jacket or a sweater if you're going to be out the door this evening, especially heading to the Hot Rods game. Temperatures will be in the 50s already in most areas by 7 o'clock, 40s after midnight tonight, on our way down to low to middle 40s by tomorrow morning. But good news, warming starts tomorrow. There's a small chance for rain midweek. Then get ready for some summer-like readings as we head closer to the upcoming weekend. I've got the full forecast for you in just a few minutes. Lauren? 
Thanks so much, Shane. Crews are nearing the end of construction on Small House Road. Right now, crews are in phase two of construction on Small House Road, which will ultimately widen the road by creating a middle turn lane and bring improvements to the sidewalks. Officials say the concrete work will finish up this week, and then in the next few weeks, expect to see crews striping and paving the road. Construction is scheduled to finish by the 1st of June. Well, the dumping is has been become a hindrance. Um, it's an eyesore uh, and it costs me because I have to do cleanup and I have to eliminate the trash or I get cited from the city. Tremaine Taylor is the owner of the lot on the corner of Power Street and Boat Landing Road, which has become one of many illegal dumping sites in and around Bowling Green. Due to the excessive illegal dumping on his property, Taylor has installed security cameras, captured video of license plates of the suspects, and filed a report with police. Stan Reagan, the coordinator of the Environmental Planning and Assistance for Warren County, says he's seen illegal dumping as a growing problem in the area and continues to apply for illegal dumping dump cleanup grants through the Kentucky Pride Funds. With these grants, the state matches the cleanup cost 75% and the county picks up the other 25%. Reagan says there are many alternatives to illegal dumping in Warren County. You have trash collection in Warren County as every residence and business is required to have. Those things can go away and it's a whole lot cheaper than having to waste your time loading that junk up and dumping it on somebody's property that you don't have control of. Reagan says he'll be issuing a contract to clean up this dump site and about eight others in the next two weeks when the fiscal court acts on his bids that they opened up. If you get caught dumping illegally, you could get charged up to a $500 fine or be charged with a felony. A new post office opened in downtown Bowling Green today. The new building at 628 State Street replaces the old post office at 311 11th Street. The new structure has been completely remodeled, complete with new post office boxes, a self-service kiosk, and all the other accommodations the previous post office had. We were lucky enough to find a location in the downtown area, which was a big concern for our customers. So we're very happy to be in the location and very happy to keep it in the downtown area to serve our customers. Everyone who had a post office box at the 11th Street location can access their new P.O. box at the new post office building. The official grand opening will be announced at a later date. This year's St. Jude Dream Home giveaway has kicked off. Your $100 ticket for a chance to win a home goes directly to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital in Memphis. If you've yet to buy a ticket, a year of gas and groceries is at stake. You have until June 14th to qualify for that early bird prize valued at $4,800. For more details on how you can purchase your ticket, head on over to wbco.com slash dream home. Are you good at texting and driving? Probably not. According to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, in 2017, over 3,000 people died in distracted driving-related accidents. Andy Pilgrim, a professional race car driver and founder of the Traffic Safety Education Foundation, says good driving habits first start with responsible parents. Parents are the biggest influence on their child's driving. This is something that parents a lot of times don't realize. So what I say to all parent groups, especially the parents of newborns, when you turn that child's safety seat around to face front, you have to be aware that the child will pick up on your driving habits and behaviors from that point. For more information on responsible driving tips, you can watch Brandon Jarrett's complete report tonight on 13 News at 6. Felicity Huffman pleads guilty for her role in a college admissions cheating scandal. Details in two minutes. You're watching 13 News at 5. One of the biggest stars caught up in the Varsity Blues college admissions scandal faced a judge today. As Andrea Fujii reports, actress Felicity Huffman formally entered her guilty plea. A solemn-looking Felicity Huffman made her way back to a Boston courthouse amid a sea of cameras holding her brother's hand. Inside, she formally pled guilty for her role in the so-called Varsity Blues college admissions scandal. In exchange for her plea to a single felony count of conspiracy, federal prosecutors agreed to recommend a sentence of four months imprisonment, a year of supervised release, and a $20,000 fine. Huffman, the former Desperate Housewives star, is one of 33 parents charged in the bribery scandal. In April, she 
signed a plea deal admitting to paying $15,000 to have an SAT proctor correct the answers on her daughter's exam, improving her daughter's score by 400 points. In an earlier statement, Huffman expressed deep regret and shame, writing, my daughter knew absolutely nothing about my actions. This transgression toward her and the public I will carry for the rest of my life. My desire to help my daughter is no excuse to break the law or engage in dishonesty. Meanwhile, actress Lori Loughlin and her fashion designer husband Massimo Giannulli are choosing to fight the charges. They're accused of paying half a million dollars to get their daughters recruited to the USC crew team, despite neither of them participating in the sport. Felicity Huffman is acting like someone who's just pled guilty. Lori Loughlin is acting like someone who feels like she doesn't belong there. Prosecutors and judges appreciate remorse. Court documents previewing the potential evidence include emails and wiretapped calls between Lachlan, her husband, and this man, Rick Singer, the alleged mastermind of the scheme who has since become a cooperating witness. Why did you decide to plead? And federal prosecutors are suggesting that more charges could be coming for parents, coaches, and even some adult children. Reporting in Boston, I'm Andrea Fuji, ABC News. Huffman's husband, actor William H. Macy, did not attend today's court proceedings. Huffman's sentencing is set for September 13th. Otherwise, things look pretty good for fishing on Tuesday. And the peak time on the fishing game forecast tomorrow will be in the late morning. But it does look good from about mid-morning, 9 a.m. until 1 p.m. A secondary peak later in the afternoon around 5 p.m. during the daylight hours anyway. You can find the fishing game forecast anytime on the website and on the smartphone app. Clearing skies will lead to more sunshine. We'll tell you about it next. First Alert Weather, sponsored by Med Center Health. We might be in the minority, but I'm like you. I like the cooler temperatures. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if you like them, enjoy this because I think in another week to week and a half, we're going to get warm and humid and maybe stay that way for the remainder of the month of May. The clouds are the reason why it's so cool today. We're going to break up the band tomorrow, and we will see the sunshine return in more abundance after what's been a rather gloomy time of it around here for the better part of the last three days. Clouds, very abundant there on Doppelmax. One thing we don't see, though, is any rain beneath these clouds and we don't expect any for a monday evening we will stay dry and that will remain the case on into our tuesday but with the clouds and a northwest wind flow those temperatures have been running about 15 degrees below seasonal averages again today just 60 for bowling green nashville at 66 only 50s for lexington a chilly 53 right now in jackson kentucky and even to the west, not much warmer for Paducah, 63 degrees. Normally, we're looking at 70s, if not 80s this time of year. But hang in there, folks. It will be warming up beginning tomorrow. There's a look downtown at the Hot Rods. They are warming up here and getting ready to do battle against the South Bend Cubs in a new uh, series of games at home starting at 635 tonight. And there is that all-too-familiar cloud cover which we've been holding on to for the last three days now. We're Bowling Green 60 is the temperature now. The airport wind here from the north at 6 and humidity at 49%. And there is a static view there in the ballpark. Clouds over Munfordville. few peaks of sun every now and again. And that's been the case for other places today, too. You're 58 degrees. Russellville 59 with a mostly cloudy sky there in Logan County as well this afternoon. Still high amounts of tree pollen, although not as high as it has been at 7.3. Grass pollen also starting to rear its ugly head now as we head into mid and also late May. And that will take over as the predominant pollen maker for the latter half of the month. The UV index moderate today and will remain so on Tuesday at a 5. And clouds keeping the Ohio Valley cool once again. 40s and 50s for temperatures to the northeast of us. Where's the warp? Well, it's over the plains right now where temperatures are in the upper 70s to near 80. We've also got a storm system brewing up here with showers and thunderstorms over parts of the Dakotas into the Nebraska Panhandle, also affecting Colorado. That's a warm front which is going to slide on through here on Wednesday morning and could touch off a few scattered showers and thunderstorms for our area come midweek. But tomorrow looks dry and it also looks better too as we get more sunshine back into play. Low clouds will finally erode across the area tonight. Waking up to clearing skies tomorrow morning with chilly temperatures. The jackets will be needed for the kids as they wait for the buses. And 
for the adults too with only low to middle 40s but we do warm up to near 70 degrees tomorrow afternoon getting back closer to seasonal norms anyway under mostly sunny skies still dry through tuesday night then on wednesday morning you can see some showers and storms making a run at us that's the arrival of that warm front and as it moves on in here could spark off some scattered shower and thunderstorm development with temperatures still warmer despite more clouds there back into the middle 70s. We are counting down some big days here. Last day of school for Bowling Green City, just 10 days away. One day later for Warren County, that'll be next Friday. And then, of course, Memorial Day. That is two weeks from today. How are things shaping up temperature-wise? Well, this is the long-range outlook here for NOAA. This takes in the period May 21st through 27th. And right now... It is skewing above average temperature wise for a good portion of the eastern United States. This takes you into Memorial Day weekend, giving us some idea of what we can expect down the road. And it also skews below average on rainfall, too. So we'll be watching the trends very carefully as we move toward the holiday weekend next weekend. As for tonight, it will be on the chilly side, lows down the 40s. Clearing sky, especially after midnight, will set us up for more sunshine, a better looking Tuesday. And a warmer one, too, with a high of 70. Then out of 50 for the low tomorrow night, up to 73 Wednesday. A few scattered thunder showers in there. And then we're dry Thursday. Weak system on Friday could touch off an isolated thunder shower. But look at the temperatures back to the mid and even upper 80s this weekend. Staying there into Monday. Lows at night also warming all the way into the 60s for the end of the week. And staying there through the weekend. Know the weather before it knows you by downloading the First Alert weather app for your iPhone or Android. Lauren? Thanks, Shane. A pilot arrested at Louisville International Airport just moments before his flight took off is now facing charges in a true murder, including two who authorities say were found burned beyond recognition in a torch car. It was a stunning twist to a 2015 cold case triple homicide in Kentucky. Christian Martin is a pilot for American Airlines subsidiary PSA Airlines and was arrested over the weekend on an airplane full of passengers just moments before his flight was set to take off. Nine uh, separate counts, uh, three counts uh, of murder, uh, three counts of tampering with physical evidence, one count of arson, one count of attempted arson, and one count of burglary. There's no known motive for the murders, but one of the victims was slated to testify in a sexual assault case against Martin, which was scheduled to take place two weeks after the murders. Martin is being held without bond. President Trump not backing down on China, tweeting this morning, China will be hurt very badly if they do not make a deal. And this weekend claiming the U.S. will bring in billions of dollars in tariffs. As Serena Marshall reports, China responds with their own tariffs and the Dow opening more than 500 points down. The two largest economies in the world now in a trade war. About an hour after President Trump tweeted directly at Chinese President Xi today that China should not retaliate, will only get worse, they did just that, increasing tariffs of up to 25% on $60 billion of U.S. goods starting June 1st. Trump continuing to defend his decision to increase tariffs from 10 to 25 percent on $200 billion of Chinese imports Friday over China's unfair trade practices, tweeting the trade war is only going to hurt China and there is no reason for the U.S. consumer to pay the tariffs. But his top economic advisor on Fox News admits that's false. So the president says China doesn't. China, it pays the tariffs. They may suffer consequences, but it's U.S. businesses and U.S. consumers who pay, correct? Yes, to some extent. I, mean, yeah, I don't disagree with that. Again, both sides, both sides will suffer on this. Those consumers suffering through increased prices on items like televisions, cars, batteries, beauty products, even foods like seafood and coffee. Importers will not absorb the entire cost of an increased tariff levy. Both sides were close to a deal, but that fell apart for Friday, Republicans cautioning the president it's time to get back to the negotiating table. The longer we're involved in a tariff battle or a trade war, the better chance there is that we could actually enter into a recession because of it. Right now, there are no new talks scheduled, but Presidents Trump and Xi will likely come face to face next month at the G20 summit. Serena Marshall, ABC News, Washington. President Trump says he's going to take action to help the nation's farmers in the midst of the escalating trade war with China. The actress once called America's sweetheart, Doris Day, has died. Day's career in television and films.
spanned more than three decades, and many of the songs she made popular can still be heard today. In the 1950s, Dora Day charmed audiences and her leading men, her beautiful voice and bubbly personality. Hey, Sarah, Sarah, whatever will be, will be. Day left Hollywood after the conclusion of her hit TV series, The Doris Day Show. She moved to Carmel, opened an inn, and started a foundation for animals. Doris Day died of complications from pneumonia. She was 97 years old. Race guys are going to clear up for Tuesday, and with brighter skies and more sunshine, temperatures will respond by warming back to near 70 tomorrow. And after a chilly start, that will be a nice afternoon. We should go into the 80s by later in the week. All right, so I guess we should put on a happy face. Oh, there you there go. You go. <laughs> we'll see you back here for 13 News at 6.